My sophomore year, I hadn't, I hadn't really grown. I was, a really, I was a really tiny kid when I was in high school. I was only about five, six, 100, 110 pounds maybe. You know, I'd had a good, good college career, you know, a couple uh, all Midwest kind of first teams, honorable mention All-Americans, types of, t types of things like that. But at that time, you know, unless you really went to one of the big schools, there wasn't enough draft picks in the MLS draft for them to take everyone. Kieran was somebody that I met um, again on an off chance in Chicago. He said, would you ever be interested in coming to England? He said, I think you have what it takes. He said, I think your, um, I think your style of play suits the English game. And, uh, you know, on Kieran's advice, I kind of just thought about it. And, and I thought, well, like I said, either way, I have to do it the hard way. And either way, I'm going to have to go through that trial phase. When we first got here, uh, Kieran had a, had a friend, uh, a guy called Henry, that was, uh, he's still a, a good friend of ours to this day again. And, and he had, uh, at that time, was a, a former scout of, scout of Arsenal, and he, had, he was at that time scouting uh, in the Wembley area for Fulham. So he kind of had an eye for talent and had seen us play just when we first came over, and he obviously knew Kieran from years before and knew the type of player that Kieran was and, and, and had good recommendations for both of us. So he originally wrote a, hand, uh, a, hand, uh, a handwritten letter, kind of resume, on Fulham-headed paper that we, uh, uh, for both of us, that we took on the road with us. And we went to, uh, we, first we sat down and plotted our, our little journey around Europe and uh, went to Belgium and, and Holland and, and, uh, and Germany and kind of just knocked on doors. We had a whole map of teams and where they were and the numbers we needed to call or the addresses of the club so we could take cabs there and try to knock on doors. And, we spent about a month and a half running around, staying in hostels, knocking on teams' doors, and uh, and doing stuff like that. I mean, we got a couple times guys would talk to us, or coaches would, and say, "Well, we're not really looking for guys, but you guys can come to the game tonight." So we got a few tickets uh, to uh, that was when we were in Rotterdam for a team called Sparta Rotterdam, um, and then we went to Royal Antwerp in Belgium, knocked on that door, actually made it into the stadium and talked to somebody. Um, and they said, yeah, okay, well, give us your numbers, we'll call you back. And they never, they never did, of course. But, you know, that was kind of the adventure part of it. And there's, there's some really funny stories of, about, you know, staying at hostels and just the whole European experience. You know, I, I mean, there's a lot of people in America and students now that go and travel Europe and, and stay in hostels with weird people, nine in a room, things like that. And me and Karen are sitting there looking at each other like, what are we doing? We're supposed to be trying to be professional soccer players. And I'm staying in a hostel with, a 75-year-old guy that stays up all night coughing and itching himself and me and him are laughing at each other just thinking you know this isn't exactly what we expect but again this is th that was the fun of it that was that was kind of the adventure and uh, eventually we, we after a month and a half we ran out of money uh, came back and that was kind of the goal anyway we just thought um, you know we never you never know what can happen so we got to take a chance on the whole European thing if not you know see a bit of Europe then from there we start playing non-league and then non-league is, is kind of a, that slow rise. It's you play, you have a decent game, a coach sees you, or a coach you know, or a, or a guy you play against you used to play pro, and now he's 38 and just playing non-league for fun for a couple hundred pounds a week, just just showing up on Saturdays, getting a little pocket change and things like that. You know, this is this is where this is where it starts. This is where kids that you know, like myself, who maybe didn't have the the best opportunities to to try to become professional or didn't, didn't have the connections to necessarily make it there, this is where they start. And this is, this is where, where it all, all gets, uh, gets going. And from there, you, you know, the, the stands are filled with people of all different types. You know, you got scouts that come and look for that raw talent, maybe. Maybe that, that kind of diamond in the rough kind of player. This is one thing I do remember, playing on fields like this and weather like this when it's cold and crappy and raining and playing in mud and dirt that just sticks to you and it's freezing and it was on this field on this exact field where I played against Watford in, in the preseason friendly um, where after that game we were in the clubhouse just right over there where uh, the then manager at the time Ray Lewington of Watford talked to my non-league manager after, in the bar after the game and was uh, asked about my story basically he said who's uh, who's your center half and, and and who's your forward which is actually uh, Kieran at that time you know my friend who I'd come over here with to start the journey with and um, it was us two that got picked out of this game. We both played for, for Northwood in that game against Wofford and uh, on this exact field. The reason we had this game was because the year before they had signed someone from Northwood. They had just signed, they had signed a forward because at this time Wofford didn't have any money and 
and they were trying to get players on the cheap and uh, that player ended up being uh, their leading scorer that season. And then as a thank you, Watford uh, had said, uh, we'll come back and give you guys a friendly, more or less, to, to play. And then I, that's the game I ended up playing in. Well, I think the first thing for me it was it was uh, first and foremost was the, just the training aspect of things and being involved in a professional atmosphere in a professional club and you know training every day in particular was 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 new to me. I had never trained every day before throughout a week, um, so uh, that was kind of my first impression of the club was to come in and you see the the youth team cleaning the, the first team guys' uh, boots and, and and the cleats and making sure they're clean and then the, just the uh, the, the training ground atmosphere, but then to come in for my first game, um, again, it was uh, it was my trial game against uh, that. Uh, it was a preseason friendly against Real Zaragoza, a Spanish uh, La Liga team, and it was our final Premier uh, uh, preseason game. And the manager at the time had asked me to come in because uh, he wanted to get me involved, and I hadn't even trained with the first team during my trial. So I just thought I would sit on the bench or just get to see the stadium and kind of do that type of thing as far as my introduction. Um, but I came in and I went into the, the changing rooms just down there and, um, and they had the team, the starting lineup on the board and, and I, was, I was in it. So it was, uh, that, was, that, that was my first introduction to the stadium. It was, it was a bit of an unknown. You know, I'd come in not knowing that I was even gonna play, let alone even see the field. So. Um, to come in my first time ever seeing and being at this stadium and then to start against a Spanish La Liga team was, uh, was, was a bit of a, uh, a shock. I just love telling the story because there is character. There is, there is so many elements to how you make it into this, into this kind of reality that is now. You know, uh, you know I, owe, I owe a lot of people. I never would have made it to England if it wasn't for Kieran. I never would have stayed in England if it wasn't for Kieran's family. I never would have made it to Chicago or tried to push myself if it wasn't for my high school coach to say, go to Chicago, I think you could make it there. You know, I, I think on all stories like this, you're gonna have those people that are, the, that are the influence in making you make decisions. You know, yeah, ultimately it is me that said, yeah, why not? You know, that's, that was my attitude. That was my decision. But of course, you, all these people help, make, help you make those decisions and make them, make them sensible in your own head. And, um, you no know, similar type of thing. If my non-league coach hadn't talked to the Watford manager after that trial game, I, I never would have, um, I never would have made it at, 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 even to that trial. If if I would have went to to Watford on trial and and uh, and they would have had other center halves on trial, like when Kieran came to, to Watford on trial with me, he there was three other forwards on trial, so he got 10 minutes in two reserve games. They didn't have any other center halves on trial, and I got 90 minutes in both games. You know, and I, so I really had a. Um, a showcase to try to, to try to show what I had, and uh, you know those types of uh, decisions and those types of things working out for you in, in, in a certain way always, um, you know, are little elements of the story of how it all became now.